how you doing? Welcome to my channel. My name's Chewy. Today I'm going to make you some chili. Except I'm not doing a beef chili. I'm going to do some elk meat chili. Now elk meat is a hell of a lot better for you than beef. There's no hormones, no antibiotics, and it's taken locally from my area. So stick with me. We're going to make some chili. Okay, now these are going to be the ingredients I'm using. Right back here, I've got some mushrooms that I've chopped up. I've got one package of bacon, a orangish yellow bell pepper chopped up, one stalk of celery, two jalapenos diced up fairly fine, about a half of a very large onion chopped up. This right here is my pound, pound and a half, it's a healthy pound and a half of ground elk meat. I'm going to use a little bit of Hungarian paprika for smoky sweetness, some chili powder, some cayenne pepper, and chili ain't chili without a little bit of ground cumin. I'm going to use a little bit of prepared, dried prepared mustard. I've got some crushed tomatoes. I've got diced tomatoes. I've got one can of tomato paste. Now, I'm going to usually use four cloves of garlic, but this right here is an elephant garlic. This is equivalent to about four to five cloves. Use a little bit of crushed red pepper, some granulated garlic. I've got bay leaves, and believe it or not, I do use cinnamon. It adds a nice little flavor. Then I've got some pink Himalayan salt, pepper, and a little bit of Jack Daniels to deglaze the pan once I cook the meats. Let's get cooking. Okay, now to make my chili, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bacon and I'm going to fry it up, basically make little bacon bits out of it. First thing I'm going to do is make sure I'm going to get my pan nice and warm. Add the bacon. Now, when I get this all rendered down, we'll be right back. All right, I got my bacon all cooked down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all my bacon here, and I am going to transfer it. My cooked bacon. I'm going to transfer it into that crock pot that I have about a half a bag of red bean, red pinto, uh, kidney beans, and a half a bag of Anasazi beans. I'm going to get all that added up and I will bring you back for the next step. Okay, I got my bacon added to the crock pot. Now I'm going to start browning this wonderful elk meat that I have here. You can see by its color, it's a nice deep red color, very little fat in this. So I had to leave a little bit of the bacon grease in the pan. Now I don't want to break this stuff up too fine. So right now I'm just going to kind of chunk it up into pretty decent sized chunks while it's browning. And to this meat, I'm going to add my onion so it can caramelize and give the meat a little bit more flavor. I'm also going to add my pepper, my bell pepper, and I'm going to add this one stalk of celery just for a little bit of extra color. Now once this cooks down, browns up a little bit, I'll bring it back. Okay, I've got the elk, the elk meat, ground, uh, browned up. It's about two-thirds of the way browned. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my diced jalapeno peppers. Get that stirred in just a little bit. Let 
them get warmed up with the rest of the vegetables. And then I'm going to add it to the crock pot as well. Okay, got my meat in the crock pot. I've already added my can of puree. Now I'm going to add my can of diced tomatoes. Now, and I'm also going to add the tomato paste. Now since this is very thick chili, I'm going to take my diced tomato can. And right now I'm going to start off with one can of water and then we'll mix it up and see how it looks. Okay, I put actually ended up putting in about a half of about a half a jar of the water or half a can of the water. To this mix I'm going to add one bay leaf. Remember to pull that out after once your chili is done cooking. I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of some crushed red pepper. I'm going to add a full teaspoon of some granulated garlic. Now this is where the cinnamon comes in. Just going to give it a little dash. Don't want it to taste like French toast or anything. Then I'm going to get my chili powder out. That's going to take two nice heaping tablespoons of the chili powder. Spread it around a little bit so you don't end up with big clumps in your chili. I'm going to get my cayenne pepper. I'm going to do about a half, half a teaspoon. Don't want to make it too hot. Then the uh, cumin. I'm going to add one full tablespoon of cumin. Eh, that's maybe a half a tablespoon. Then my paprika, I'm going to do about a half a tablespoon. And then the mustard, we'll do about a half, we're going to do half a teaspoon of the prepared mustard. I'm going to start stirring this up, get everything all mixed in and see how it looks. Oh, I wish you guys could smell this. It smells so good. Now some of these, these spices, they're going to help absorb some of the water. Now as you can tell it's still a little bit thick. So I'm going to take a little bit more of this water I got in this can. Add a little bit at a time. You don't want it too runny or too watery. Because it's going to thicken up from the tomato paste and the rest of the spices. This stuff smells so good. I still think this is a little bit thick, so add just a little bit more water. So far I've added about three quarters of the of what is that, a 28 ounce can. Just add a little 
little bit of fresh crushed black pepper. And a little bit of this pink Himalayan salt. Give it one final stir. Almost forgot the important part. Forgot needed to add the garlic. Now for this, cut this sucker in half because these things are, these elephant garlic are fairly large and they don't exactly fit in my garlic press. So give that a quick squeeze. Put the other half in. Make sure it all goes down the chute. Then the, uh, the uh, mushrooms, we're going to wait a while to add these mushrooms after this has been cooking for about an hour, hour and a half. Then we'll add the mushrooms in for about the last hour, hour and a half of cooking. This total cook time is going to take anywhere from three and a half to four and a half hours. So when this is almost ready to add the mushrooms in, we'll bring it back. Okay, chili's been going for about an hour and a half now. Now it's time to put in the mushrooms. Now once I put in these mushrooms, I'm not going to stir it again until just before it's done, which is going to be about another hour and a half to two hours. When the mushroom starts to sink, that's when she's done. The beans are starting to get soft, the meat's nice and cooked. Oh, I wish you guys could smell the smell coming off of this stuff. Wonderful smelling. Anyway, we'll check back when this stuff is ready. Okay, our chili's done. It's been cooking for right around 8 to 10 hours. And as you can tell, oh man, this stuff smells so good. I think I'm going to have me a bowl of it right now. Give it a nice stir. As you can see, it's nice and thick. All the mushrooms have sank down to the bottom. Oh man, I wish you guys could smell this. The beans are all nice and soft. It's got a nice dark, rich red color. And all I gotta do is top it with a little bit of cheese. All right, now you can also top this chili with some sour cream. But me personally, I like mine just straight cheese. Cheese is all nice and melted in here. Mmm. Oh, wow. I really wish you guys could taste this. Nice, slight, smoky flavor from the bacon. Jalapenos give it just enough of a bite. Beans are nice and tender. Mm. And the elk meat flavor in this, oh god, yeah. You guys want to try a good recipe and you can get your hands on some elk meat, I highly recommend giving this a try. Anyway, I'm going to eat my chili, and thanks for watching. And remember, don't ever trust a skinny chef.